Welcome to Zoo Babies. This time on our tour of the world's zoos and wildlife parks, we get to meet lots of cheeky monkeys. First, let's go over to Moscow Zoo to catch up with this baby orangutan. Just like many six-month-old boys, this baby ape spends much of its time exploring the world around him. In the mornings, he's busy climbing ropes and playing with toys in a special room in the zoo. But at other times, he also needs lots of contact with others, especially because his mother rejected him shortly after his birth. Zookeepers say that the 15-year-old orangutan mother, herself orphaned and brought up in the zoo, simply had no maternal instinct. She tried to take care of her baby in the hours after birth, but didn't know what to do. She lost interest and her milk disappeared. The mother and father now live in a separate section apart from their baby, and human zookeepers tend to the growing boy every day. Orangutans are solitary animals, and about 97% of their genetic makeup is the same as ours. So it's not surprising that they have similar needs. He likes being held, but at the same time, he's very active and likes to play with his toys. He can play for hours by himself, but only if somebody is next to him. He doesn't like to be left alone and starts screaming and crying. Soon, this little orangutan will celebrate his six-month anniversary, surrounded by the human family that's bringing him up. Moscow Zoo officials say the best gift would be for a sponsor to adopt their new orphan. As male orangutans get older, their faces develop cheek pads and pouches on their throats. They can live to be about 35 years old in the wild, but in captivity, they can live to 50 years or more. Orangutans are apes, as are gibbons, chimpanzees and gorillas. Their predators include tigers, leopards and even large pythons. When this baby grows up, he will have territories that he will have to defend against other male orangutans. But for now, He's safe within the confines of his own private enclosure. A baby koala that survived a series of infections and was removed from his sick mother has become the star of Sydney's Taronga Zoo. At just seven months old, Curry had to be taken from his mother's pouch when she was unable to take care of him. If he had not been rescued, his mother may have rejected him. Curry was extremely dehydrated and underweight when he was placed in the care of a surrogate human mother. Darylin Rainey took over the round-the-clock care of him as soon as he came out of his mother's pouch. He weighed the same as a tub of butter when he was first removed and needed constant feeding with specially formulated milk. Yeah, very concerned. Yeah. Two hourly vigil for the first about two weeks. And now it's eased off and he's got into a good feeding pattern and he seems to be doing quite well. Curry has now started chewing on eucalyptus leaves and will start eating properly within the next few months. As soon as Curry is weaned off the bottle, he'll be able to join his mother back in the koala enclosure. Meanwhile, a one-month-old baby mandrill monkey was busy suckling and discovering his mother's feet back at Moscow Zoo. The eight-year-old mother still carries her newborn around with her everywhere, but soon the young monkey will be walking on his own. The birth marks a great success for the zoo, which helps breed this endangered species of the world's largest monkey. The nine-year-old father looks on with a seemingly indifferent yawn, though the monkey keepers say they're pleased that at least he doesn't threaten his son and heir. 
Their only major concern is the jealous first wife, who holds the dominant female spot in the family. She lost her newborn last year, and perhaps because of this, has been extremely jealous of the new mother and her baby. The first wife chases the young mother around the cage and sometimes tries to bite her. It's a life on the run for the mother and her son, who have to keep their wits about them in the middle of the domestic dispute. Zoo officials say they're observing the rivalry and will only intervene if they think that the newborn's life is threatened. For now, it's important that the new mother and perhaps even the jealous wife learn to raise a child. But they believe the baby has already made it through its most crucial period and will have a long and healthy life. A new baby has also appeared in the neighboring cage. The six-week-old Colobus monkey is the latest addition to this small family. The zookeepers aren't sure if it's a boy or girl, and it's sticking close to its mother. Thankfully, it's been born into a more harmonious family. These monkeys often care for each other's children as a community. And in this small family, there seems to be no rivalry between the mothers. Zoo animals over in South Korea have quit lounging around in their cages and have surprised onlookers by performing in a play that highlights the need to protect the Earth. A cast of 180 animals, including orangutans, pelicans, ducks and zebras, participated in the play called Prince of the Jungle, about a 19th century prince living in a tropical jungle who oversees the safety of the animals. As the play opened on the Animal Wonder stage, guinea pigs roamed freely and monkeys played golf, while the prince, dressed in a bright green overcoat and purple boots, spoke to parrots in English. One parrot also flew into the audience and landed on a man's arm. The harmony of the jungle is suddenly endangered when a hunter appears and begin shooting at the animals. As music expressing the sudden tension blasted from the stage speakers, a skunk appeared with an ambulance tied to its back to help the wounded. A monkey safety guard then appeared riding a zebra and tried to catch the hunter. Responding to the prince's call for help, the chief orangutan climbed from rope to rope which hung from the ceiling to reach the stage. The orangutan decided to gather all the animals, including the ducks, a lion and a pelican, and leave the jungle together. Later in the play, the animals all board a boat and head off to a new continent. An animal handler, Lee J. Mann, thought the play was a success. Because the audience saw such a performance for the first time, they're really enjoying it. But we will not be satisfied with that and we'll try harder. Upon finding a new place to live, the animals celebrated by shooting basketball hoops. The play, which is being showcased at Everland, a zoo located an hour outside Seoul, was written to inspire the audience to help preserve the earth and live in harmony with animals. These animals were able to act certain parts of the play that were unusually difficult because the animal handlers have been working with them since birth. Zoo visitors were amazed. I was surprised and my daughter had fun. We both enjoyed the show. The monkey was climbing the rope and went up there. It was really fun. But it wasn't just the audience who had lots of fun. The animals did, too. Many of them got to show off talents and skills that they're not usually known for, like sinking hoops in basketball.
On a private reserve of 38 hectares deep in the Chaper Valley of Bolivia, hundreds of broken, abused and traumatized wild animals have found a refuge. For more than 10 years, some 1,125 animals have called the Intiwarayasi refuge their home. The animals, which include tigers, monkeys, pumas and birds, were all rescued from animal traffickers or people who kept them as pets in inappropriate environments. Most of them have been mistreated and have suffered fractures or been undernourished. Many, like the puma Kierki, have benefited greatly from their time at the refuge. Kierki was rescued from a zoo in Oruro, whose average temperature was zero degrees centigrade all year. At the zoo, Kierki displayed aggressive behavior and suffered from ill health, all of which have been overcome at the refuge. Here, in the most natural of environments, the animals are taught to readapt to the wild or in cases that are too far gone, given a better life and a warmer environment in which to live out their days. But the refuge does not only draw abused animals. It also attracts people from all over the world who are trying to heal. 32 foreign volunteers and 10 Bolivian volunteers work at the refuge. Many of them are young people who arrive with their own problems finding in this natural environment a place where they can worry about the animals' needs and learn to forget their own traumas. According to one of the workers at the refuge, the idea is simple. Their philosophy is to raise up any being that is fallen. The refuge brings together orphans of the jungle and orphans of the city. Andrew Axtell from Scotland looks after the macaws which have broken their wings and can't fly. During the day, he brings the birds out of the cages and interacts with them to give them a little bit more interest. These parrots thrive off human interaction. Each of the animals has their own special volunteer who takes charge of their necessities and ensures that their personal charge is well looked after. Volunteers get to work with traumatized animals and help place them in their correct environment and monitor the animal's food intake. Michael Tink from Switzerland has been working with Tequila, another of the refuge's pumas, who was rescued from a traveling circus. After finding it difficult to work with her the first few days, she's now become his very own pussycat. For the men who have to capture these animals on film, it's also very special and lots of fun, especially when the animals want to take over their job of taking pictures themselves. On this episode of Zoo Babies, we've already seen lots of very talented animals. Now let's take a look at this chimpanzee named Asuka who looks like any other trained chimp at the zoo or circus. The three-year-old primate wears clothes and walks on stilts to the roaring applause of spectators at an amusement park west of Tokyo. Watch this. Asuka clearly loves the applause of the crowd and absolutely shines in the spotlight. But she also has another side, a somewhat more quiet and artistic side, though it's hard to imagine. When she goes home for the day, she likes to sit in front of a canvas with a paintbrush. Asuka is not just an entertainer, but an accomplished artist who has nearly a hundred works to her name, some of which have gone on exhibition in Tokyo. Asuka rarely uses black, opting for bright colors, and when she's in a creative mood, she can toil over the canvas for hours on end, creating a number of works, each of them unique. 
Experts say many apes, especially female or baby apes, will draw if given the tools. And the creative flair is a sign of their intelligence. There's no need to tell that to Asuka, who gives the audience a look of confidence as she paints. She knows she's got talent. Chimpanzees fascinate humans and are favorites both in zoos and in the wild. The discovery that they use tools for certain purposes initially came as a bit of a surprise. But this little chimp is especially good with her hands. When she was two and a half, I tried to see if she could draw on my notebook. She could do that. So I got some canvas and got her to paint on it. Then I discovered she was quite talented. Asuka may not have a live audience to congratulate her when she finishes painting, but she's not shy about clapping herself. On this show, we've seen many unusual animals and pairings, such as giraffes and pandas getting married to each other. But who would have thought that monkeys and rats could become the best of friends? The capybara is the world's largest living rodent, and they've been getting along famously with squirrel monkeys at a zoo in Japan's Saitama Prefecture near Tokyo. Although both species come from South America, it's unlikely that they live together in the wild. The capybara lives by the riverside, and squirrel monkeys live in forests. I don't think it means that capybara and squirrel monkeys are compatible in general. It may just mean that the capybaras living here are too gentle and meek to offend the monkeys. According to the keeper, when the zoo first started to let the odd couple share an area, the capybaras were obviously bewildered with their roommates and refused to have any contact with them for a long time. But after years of rejection, the capybaras recently opened their hearts to the monkeys. But cohabitation between different creatures is not always that simple. A spider monkey was killed by a capybara in a zoo soon after they started living together. The tragedy happened when the monkey snatched grass from the capybara, which had been irritated by its repeated tricks. But the successful pairing of these very different creatures in this Japanese zoo has become the center of media attention, with hundreds of visitors gathering around the enclosure every day to view them. They seem to be comfortable with one another, and I wouldn't be surprised if they live together in the wild. Capybaras are highly social animals and live in groups controlled by a dominant male. They're so cute. I'm very happy to see such a rare couple. And very rare they are indeed. Now let's meet another of Japan's animal stars. The five kilo baby lion cub is only one month old and is greeted with squeals and coos from the crowds at the Zurasia Yokohama Zoological Gardens at every public appearance he makes. This cuddly little treasure is well deserving of all the attention it's been getting. The tiny cub is of a rare subspecies called the Asiatic lion. Only 350 survive in the wild and are distinct from the African lion seen in most zoos. He was so cute. I'm glad that I can take photographs of the baby lion before he grows much, much bigger in just a short time. The last of the Asiatic lions now mostly live in the state of Gujarat in India and go by the name of Indian lion in Japan. Once king of the animal kingdom from the Mediterranean to the borders of Bangladesh, this big cat has been hunted for sport, killed by farmers trying to protect their livestock and basically chased from its habitat by humans to the point where it's become critically endangered. 
For the zookeepers in Yokohama, this newborn pussycat deserves the full star treatment. It is, after all, also the first Asiatic lion cub born in Japan in six years, and the first ever male cub delivered here. Asiatic lions grow up to have shaggy coats and a long tassel on the end of their tail. They also have long tufts of hair on their elbows. His mother is not only unaccustomed to raising a child, but is also a bit too old to raise one. So, after discussions, we decided to raise him by ourselves, because it would enhance his survival probability. But while he's taking baby steps to becoming a true carnivore by eating a small morsel of horse meat recently, this kitty is still just a little ball of fur and prefers to lap up specially treated cat's milk from his trainer. That's when he's not playing with his toys. The baby lion has not yet been given a name, but zoo officials have narrowed it down to three. Suraj, Dost and Raja, meaning son, friend and king in Hindi. A zoo in India's central Chhattisgarh is playing mum to three sloth bear cubs that were found separated from their mother in the forest. The cubs, one three months old and the other two six months old, were rescued by tribespeople from different forests in the region and brought to the Kanan Pendari Zoo in Bilaspur for rehabilitation. The cubs, which have been named Monica, Karina and Karishma, are under close watch by zoo workers and are fed and cared for around the clock. They're given milk three or four times a day after every four hours to mirror a mother's feeding patterns. Karina and Krishma, the two older cubs, will soon be shifted to the Janaga Zoo in Western Gujarat. In India, Madaris or nomads use sloth bears to entertain people. But thankfully, that practice has now been banned. Sloth bears are commonly found in India and in the lowland forests of Nepal, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. These baby sloth bears have lots of energy and can't help but keep the zookeepers entertained with their playful ways. Join us next time on Zoo Babies for lots more chicks, calves and cubs.